Working the budget around the clock during the final days of session, a historic decision rules in favor of the FEA and your pension, and parents against parent empowerment. These are some of the headlines topping the final week of the 2012 legislative session. Hello, I'm Andy Ford, president of the Florida Education Association. At the time of this taping, the Senate still had close to 300 bills from the House to consider. That means a lot of the legislature's work was still incomplete, but we wanted to provide an update on some of the action that should impact many of the bills that the governor signs following session. We begin with an important decision that many of us have waited almost a year to hear. It was a gamble legislators thought they wouldn't lose. Governor Scott, the Senate, and House leaders made a wager that they could balance the state budget by grabbing a portion of the salaries of hardworking teachers, education staff professionals, and other state employees. This week, the governor and the extremist members of the Florida legislature lost their bid. Circuit Judge Jackie Fulford ruled in favor of FEA's lawsuit to void the mandatory 3% pension contribution signed into law last year. The historic decision found it to be an unconstitutional breach of the state's contract with employees hired before the law took effect in July of 2011. The order calls for further collections to stop and refunds with interest for state workers enrolled in the Florida retirement system. It also sends a strong message that the state leadership is not above the law and needs to uphold the Florida Constitution. Despite claims that the ruling will create budgetary chaos, Governor Scott has dipped into the state's wallet to spend a half a million dollars for an appeal. This is money state leaders claim the state doesn't have. At a press conference, reporters asked me about the impact of the ruling. Life is a series of choices in the Florida legislature and the governor have made their choices. They need to reevaluate where they are. They have decided in this state over and over again to provide tax relief to big corporations, the people who put contributions into their campaigns, and it needs to stop. They need to fund the services of the state of Florida. Even before Judge Fulford's decision, some legislators were predicting the outcome and blasting the court if it went against the state. Senate President Herodopoulos went as far as calling Judge Fulford an activist judge. This is not judicial activism. Judicial activism is when a court ignores the law. The law in this case is well settled. The rights are declared to be of a contractual nature entered into between the member and the state, and such rights shall be legally enforceable as valid contract rights and shall not be abridged in any way. The employees have a contractual right to their pensions, and this court recognized that, even if the governor and the legislature choose not to. This is important. We are a, a, a society of laws. This court has said even the powerful have to follow the laws. Regardless of any action taken by the state to further erode your rights, the FEA will continue to advocate on your behalf, even if Governor Scott takes our battle to the state Supreme Court. A controversial and divisive proposal known to divide parents and teachers in other states has angered a group of Florida parents. So they've teamed up with several bipartisan senators to slow down the parent empowerment bill. Many have called the measure a parent trigger bill, but these parents have labeled it a corporate empowerment trigger. They say it will hand over public schools to private groups and companies for profit. The parents, including members of the PTA and other parent groups, accuse legislators of forcing through the proposal. The group held a press conference at the Capitol to express their disappointment for the legislation and the lawmakers who support it. Corporate America will have to pay attention to their stockholders. Their stockholders aren't going to necessarily be children. My stockholders are children and I'm a volunteer and I represent 330,000 voices. Thank you. When politicians grant highly paid professional lobbyists 
unlimited time to testify and refuse to let us speak, it makes us furious. We are Florida taxpayers, parents, and voters. If we don't have a right to speak during a parent empowerment meeting, nothing. <laughs> We're tired of being told by wide-eyed politicians that they have never heard from us. Our position on the parent trigger has been repeatedly and widely published by every major newspaper in the state. We're here today to go on record. Not one legitimate Florida parent group has asked for the parent trigger, parent empowerment legislation. We do not support this corporate empowerment bill. During a rare Saturday meeting held by the Senate Education Committee, Senator J.D. Alexander cut off one parent before she was able to finish her sentence. Senators then proceeded with a time-certain vote to approve the bill. Despite the lack of support by Florida parents, the legislation has advanced to the floor. The full legislature has agreed on a state spending plan, but not everyone approves. Democratic leaders are slamming the budget, saying it slights Florida's students and public schools. The plan includes $300 million in cuts to higher education, but it will allow colleges and universities to hike tuition. It also includes the creation of a 12th state university, which will be the Florida Polytechnic University. It is currently the Lakeland Branch Campus of the University of South Florida. While the budget boosts K-12 through spending by a billion dollars, it doesn't come close to making up the $1.3 billion in education cuts lost last year. Even worse, a quarter of that billion will go to the expansion of non-accountable charter school vouchers rather than your classrooms. The budget also includes a barrage of special interest items, better known as legislator pet projects or pork. It covers the governor's top priority by doubling the state's corporate income tax exemption from $25,000 to $50,000. Legislative leaders also handed out dozens of exemptions, including an increase in the tax break for manufacturers that purchase machinery and other equipment. Airplane repair businesses and aircraft engine manufacturers get a break along with taxicab and shuttle companies that buy handicap accessible vehicles. There's an exemption for taxes paid on electricity used in cattle and hog meat packing and in fruit and vegetable packing houses. That's not all. Companies taking advantage of the film and entertainment incentive program will get a $300 million tax credit for having an interactive website. And the list goes on. So when Governor Scott and legislative leaders say they have a lean budget to work with, don't believe it. This is about choices, and their choice is to starve public schools and Florida's students. It is their choice to give away your hard-earned money to big corporations that have bought legislative votes by making large political contributions. We will continue to say that a billion dollars is not a true billion added to the education budget. We need for you to understand that this money could provide for your needs and that of your students. Instead, Governor Scott and the extremist leaders in the legislature have made a choice to not fund school employee raises or offset the cost of improving your benefits. This billion is not even enough to purchase updated books and supplies for your students. The final impact of the budget is still yet to be seen. FEA will have a full analysis of the bills that passed and failed in the coming weeks. Watch for our end of session report, more video updates, and the membership meetings coming to your locals. As always, check out feaweb.org for the latest legislative information and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.